Well, the new Makita LXT 18 volt inflator must be better than the last one because the box is much bigger. G'day everyone, today the DMP-180 versus the DMP-181. This one hasn't been around all that long, but it has been superseded. Now they're both brand new in the box because I went and sold my original 18 volt Makita inflator and I kept the 12 volt one. Why did I do that? Well, because I had a heap of 12 volt batteries that I don't really use very often and I didn't mind having one permanently tied up on this so this can just sit in the wife's car all the time with the battery on it, no big deal. I didn't want to tie up an 18 volt battery all the time and when I do come to inflate something it's not that big a deal to wait a few more seconds. So when it came to going to get one of these to review I had to grab one of these at the same time just so I can compare them. If you're interested at any point in getting one take a look down in the description. Handy Hardware have just gotten these in so they're ready to go that's where I grabbed this one from and I grabbed one of the last ones of these available if you still want to grab one of those they've got a couple left. I'll also put some links to the states and the UK and anywhere where I can find them, eBay, whatever. So what are the differences between these two tools? The first difference, which I probably don't need to tell you, is that this is massive compared to the last one. It is significantly bigger. They've stuck with the same design, the same sort of shape and everything, but size-wise, whoo, she is a monster compared to the last one. It's like father, son, and grandson. Now I know some of you will already be saying, where's the XGT one, where's the 40 volt one? I couldn't grab one yet, but I will take a look at that once I can get my hands on one. But for today, we are just putting the 18 against the 18. I'll in the future maybe do a 12, 18, 40, something like that. The 180 weighs just over a kg, very light little tool, 1,008 grams. This one's significantly heavier, but not going to be too heavy to use, of course. But look at that, 2.14 kgs, more than double the weight. It is, of course, also double the size. And when you see the other numbers, you won't mind that extra weight. The 180 can do 121 psi. The new 181 can do 161 psi, 40 psi more. The duty cycle for this one, 5 minutes on, 5 minutes off. For this one, 10 minutes on, 5 minutes off. Can't imagine you're going to blow up anything with that though, it's going to take more than 10 minutes, I wouldn't have thought. The 12 volt MP100D has a discharge rate of 10 litres per minute. This has a discharge rate of 12 litres per minute. And this can pump out air at 22 litres per minute. Now those numbers are at specific pressures. It changes as the pressure gets higher, it's harder for it to push air into whatever you're trying to blow up. So at 29 psi this will do 22 litres a minute, but if you're doing 161 psi it'll drop down to about 7 litres a minute. And if you want to know the numbers for the XGT, the 40 volt, it's only 24 litres. So 10, 12, 22, big jump there, and then 24 for the XGT. What I've found is the biggest difference is when you're getting up into that higher pressure when you've almost got your tire or whatever full, that's when the lower one starts slowing down, the 12 volt one slows down and can't keep up. When you're doing small things at low pressure, they're all pretty equal. The hoses are the same length on both models. The accessories on the front here are the same on both models. You've got things here for blowing up beach balls and rugby balls and soccer balls and that sort of stuff, as well as attachments for Presta valves and what's the other one? The Dunlop one, can't remember which one's British and which one's French. Um, Makita in New Zealand call them American, British and French. Um, Presta will be French, the Dunlop one will be British and the standard Schrader valve one will be the American one. So they each come with one of these British ones attached by a small chain to the end of your hose. But I always take those off because I never ever use them because most things in this country, certainly that I'm ever going to use, Car tyres, truck tyres, bike tyres, track tyres, everything seems to come with a Schrader valve. But the biggest difference is just here. The 180 has these ones where you just poke it over, clamp it down and it's locked in place. Which are quite good, but also can be a bit annoying and can lose a bit of air pressure out of them. And the 181 has a screw-on valve adapter. So that's better in that it's a tighter fit and more reliable, less likely to pop off under high pressure, that sort of thing. But 
much more annoying to put on. Nowhere near as quick as whacking on one of these. So let me know what you think about that down in the description. Which do you prefer, the screw on one or the quick clamp style? They've given you three clips on the 181 to hold your hose, so that's one extra than you get on the 180. So stays in like so. 180, you've only got the two there, so what do you do with the rest of the hose? Because if you go like that, it's um, a little bit long still hanging off. So do you go round the side and back round? That's how I usually do it. So. They each have a power button on the side to turn them on. Once they are turned on, the screens on the top here are lit up. The new 181 has a very nice screen on it. The 180 is a little bit more basic. It's got that blue backlight there. It has a PSI bar and KPA selection button at the top. And the plus and minus here for changing your pressure. Pretty simple. When you turn on the 181, the PSI that the tool is set to will pop up in the bottom right hand corner. The number at the top is the PSI going into whatever you're inflating. And we have PSI written there. If I tap the mode button, we'll go to bar. If I tap it again, we'll go to KPA. Tap it again, back to PSI. We have a minus and a plus button. And we have those three bars there. To get to those three bars, hold your finger on the M. It will drop one down. Think of them kind of as presets. So a small one, a medium one, and a high pressure one. So in the middle, it's currently set on 36. If we hold it again, it'll go into ball mode. A little picture of a little ball there. So it's now down to 8.5. You can change those though if you want 10 PSI in your ball. Give it a wee tap there. Goes up in half a PSI increment. Hold your finger on it again. And we're back to full power. On this we go up half as I just said per click. Or hold your finger on it and it'll go ballistic and shoot right up to 161 if that is what you desire. I don't know what you're pumping up at 161 PSI, but somebody out there will be pumping up something at that, obviously. When we get close to 161, so there's 161, if I tap it again, we're right back to the start, which is five. Five, can't go lower than five. Okay, five is the lowest setting. And then up we go again, so if you're on high, you're right up there at 160 and you want to get back down to 30. You don't have to go all the way down, you can just go up. This is a feature that the other two previous models don't have. It is a deflation button, so we'll try that out when we start doing our tests. They both have a light on the front, just enough to help you find your valve in the dark while you're on the side of the road somewhere. But just like the previous two models, there is no way to hold on the trigger. So when you're inflating something, you've got to keep your finger on it the whole time. No way to lock it on. When you get to your full pressure, the machine will stop by itself. So because it stops by itself, if you have one of these devices, any of these three, this little simple trick works. Pull that up and slide a cable tie over it. That will hold your trigger in place. That's what I did, just slip a cable tie on. I have actually seen an attachment that you screw on here that you can use to clip to hold the trigger. Um, if I can find it again, I'll put a link down in the description. Right, let's test the power difference between these two things. What are we going to begin with? First up, I've got a couple of rugby balls here that have never been inflated, so we will do one with each inflator, see how different they are. For inflating the balls, you will need the needle attachment. You'll also need to moisten your needle. Make sure you lube up your needle before you jam it in your ball. I'm using new rugby balls because these are basically like currency here in New Zealand. Everybody's got a bunch of rugby balls laying around. Always check what the pressure is on your ball before you give it a jab as well. These ones have 69 kPa written on them, so that's what I'm going to set both of these inflators at. But first we'll just check the batteries to make sure they are both pretty damn close to each other. 21 charges, fully charged, everything all healthy there. 20.3 volts, we are ready to go with that one. And for the other one, 26 charges, so they're fairly close to each other, fully charged, everything healthy there, and 20.5. So it's holding 0.2 volts more charge at the moment. We'll put this one on the, the 180, give it a slight little boost. <laughs> it's not going to make much difference, I don't think. But this is why 18 volt batteries are sometimes called 20 volt max, because when you first charge them up, they can put out 20 volts, but the nominal rating for them is 18 volts. That's what the cells add up to. 
I'm going to lube up my balls with some of this 3-in-1 oil here just because that's what happens to be sitting around as well as the needle right ready to go this only goes up in 5 kPa increments so we're on 70 kPa 3, 2, 1 <coughs> done already Go. So that test was a bit of a failure because it's on 70 kPa with the highest flow pressure it couldn't blow this up it was just cutting out straight away it was putting out too much airflow for it to handle so it thought it was at 70 kPa all the time so I had to do it on the ball setting and the ball setting is somewhat slower as you just saw never mind let's blow up some tires I've got both the inflators set at 50 psi both of these tires are flat on zero psi reading on both tools. Let's see how long they take to inflate. So that was pretty conclusive, but what about pushing the old deflate button there? How does that work? What happens? So you can see the pressure go down as you're doing it. But you can also just turn the thing off and just use it to deflate your tire. Pretty basic, it just manually opens up a valve inside so that you can release the pressure. Simple but effective. I think we need to do one more a little bit bigger, eh? Now this is the point in every other inflator video I've done, I've done three or four of them now, where I would normally inflate one of my high ace van tires, but I no longer have that van. Cue sad music. Alright, this is it. The last time. Let's go. Oh, look at that, she starts beautiful. That wasn't even a good one. Oh. There she goes, off to the scrappy. Oh look, and the still works. So for this test I have one of these Space Saver type tyres. It's limited to 80 kilometres an hour. They're pieces of shit usually. This one's actually not too bad because at least it's a full width. Some of them are only like bloody bike tyres. Anyway, I'm going to use the 180 and the 181 to inflate this tyre to 32 psi and we'll see how long they take. First of all, I gotta deflate the damn thing. Right, the 181, 32 psi, let's go. One minute 18. 180, 32 psi, three, two, one. Well, that was quite a big difference. 216 versus 118. Nearly a minute different. After all those tests, both batteries are still showing four bars. Right, so how many of you want to see me blow this ball up?
And by blow it up, I mean explode blow up, not inflate blow up. I want to show of hands now. Not one of you doesn't want to see it. Oh, two of you. Two of you don't want to see it. So everybody wants to see me blow this up. Cool. I'm going to set the DMP181 to 161 PSI. I will put a cable tie on the trigger, walk away, and we'll see what happens. So the 181, clearly a huge advantage over the 180 in terms of power and speed. But not only that, it feels like a real tool. You may have heard me say in the review of this tool that I thought it was a toy, not a tool. Look at the size difference. It's like a little baby. Um, and I stand by that. It's, I mean, basically because Makita wrote on the side, something I've never seen on any other Makita tool, household use only. Just means it's not up to task, which was just a very disappointing thing to see written on a Makita tool. Not that I've actually had any problems with this. But this actually feels like the business. Feels tough. It is only ABS. They're all only ABS plastic. None of them are PA6 or polycarbonate. But it does feel a good sturdy unit. And I find when doing like bicycle tires, wheelbarrows, hand trucks, that sort of thing, those sort of tires that still have inner tubes, um, the screw on one's better because you can just stick it on the edge, tighten it up, pulls it out. Whereas this clamp style tends to push the valve back into the tire and it's hard sometimes to get it on. You've got to try and hold the thing and if it's pushing in, it's really hard to clamp it on. But let me know which one you think's best. So it's a great tool, but I know a lot of you are not going to be happy with this trigger situation and still a little shocked they left it that way. It'll be a safety legality thing, particularly in one particular country of the world, I bet. But other companies do do them with locked on switches, so yeah. Anyway, it's a great tool, but now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's blow up a rugby ball. And in case you ever wonder what the inside of a rugby ball looks like, well, there you go.